Hi, welcome back to the book report section on <laughs> Wilmshurst's Meaning of Masonry. We're now on page 21, and we're going to take off from there. Freemasonry is a sacramental system, possessing an outward and visible side, consisting of its ceremonial, its doctrine, and its symbols, which we can see and hear, and an inward and intellectual and spiritual side, which is concealed behind the ceremonial. The doctrine and the symbols, and which is available only to the Mason who has learned to use his spiritual imagination. I want to stop for a second because in the meaning of Masonry, when Wilms first used that, it was almost a direct reference to Carl Jung's active imagination in his Red Book, or spiritual imagination, would be another way of saying it. But that's another book report. We're going to keep on going here. So... It's only available to the Mason who has learned to use his spiritual imagination and who can appreciate the reality that lies behind the veil of outward symbol. Anyone can understand the simpler meaning of our symbols, especially with the help of the explanatory lectures, but he may still miss the meaning of the scheme as a vital whole. It is absurd to think that a vast organization like Freemasonry was ordained merely to teach grown-up men of the world the symbolic meaning of a few simple builder's tools, or to impress upon us such elementary virtues as temperance and justice. The children in every village school are taught such things, or to enforce such simple practices of morals and brotherly love, which every church and every religion teaches, or as relief which is practiced quite as much by non-Masons as by us, or of truth, which every infant learns upon its mother's knee. There is surely no need for us to join a secret society to be taught that the volume of sacred law is a fountain of truth and instruction, or to go through the great and elaborate ceremony of the third degree, merely to learn that we have to die. The craft, whose work we are taught to honor with the name of a science, or a royal art, has surely some larger end in view than merely inculcating the practice of social virtues common to all the world, and by no means the monopoly of Freemasons. Surely, then, it behooves us to acquaint ourselves with what that larger end consists, to inquire why the fulfillment of that purpose is worthy to be called a science, and to ascertain what are those mysteries to which our doctrine promises we may ultimately attain if we apply ourselves assiduously enough to understand what masonry is capable of teaching us. We are told that the mysteries were taught on the highest hills and in the lowest valleys which is merely a figure of speech for saying that they have been taught in circumstances of the greatest seclusion and secrecy. All the great teachers of humanity, Socrates, Plato, Pythagoras, Moses, Aristotle, Virgil, the author of the Homeric poems, including the great Greek tragedies, along with St. John, St. Paul, and innumerable other names, were all initiates of the sacred mysteries. The form of the teaching communicated has varied considerably from age to age. It has been expressed under different veils, but since the ultimate truth the mysteries aim at teaching is always one and the same, there has always been taught, and can only be taught, one and the same doctrine. Masonry offers us, in dramatic form and by means of dramatic ceremonial, a philosophy of the spiritual life of man and a diagram of the process of regeneration. This philosophy is consistent with the doctrine of every religious system taught outside the ranks of the order, but that it explains and more sharply defines the fundamental doctrines common to every religious system in the world, whether past or present, whether Christian or non-Christian. <laughs>